Hello guys and welcome back to another guide on Hydra Near. This time we're talking about 15 tips that I feel everyone should know that will make their life so much easier, whether it's avoiding bugs or just improving your setup in game. So if you do find this video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, let's jump into it. Firstly, there's a frustrating bug that means that every so often if you place items in a truck, this happens. After a while, it can get rather frustrating. Now, this should be patched soon, hopefully at least. However, until then, if you place the items into the truck by standing on the water tank, 90% of the time, the bug doesn't happen. In fact, I'll be honest, it hasn't happened once since I've done this, I'm just covering my ass by saying 90% of the time. Our second tip, you can place crucibles in the furnace to smelt items from an automated factory, but with the uneven surface, it's quite often difficult to get the ore into the crucible. However, if you place a foundation over the top of the furnace, you'll have a flat surface to place your crucible on, making it easier to get your ore into the crucible and it still heats up. Third, we have the automation with pipes. Now, from the get-go, using a water pipe can increase the efficiency of our hand panning by placing a pan underneath a drip so that the pan refills automatically to be, wash to be washed out. Now, you can also automate refueling your vehicles, which will equally be a godsend. Just route the pipes to your truck or excavator's water tank and let it drip in. Fourth, on the subject of piping and automation, though you do not need to use power shards on conveyors, they will gradually slow down depending on the length. So, to improve on this, you can add a pressure tank and a power shard. Now, the good thing about this is with the increased efficiency of the conveyors, this will actually stop nuggets getting stuck on the way into funnels, which in turn means they're more accurate and more likely to go straight into the crucible if you've used a setup like this. With the game in an early access state, we often have frame drops. Now the biggest issue for myself so far is multiple items scattered around my factory. So if you're producing a lot of gold and iron and that it's not landing in your crucible a hundred percent of the time, then pause the factory every 10-15 minutes to smelt everything and clean everything up. This will definitely help with any frame drop issues. Our sixth tip is about item placement. Uh, often the placement of items after picking them up can be difficult to put down in the perfect position, especially with the item being held to your right. Uh, if you hold down E, however, uh, whilst you're actually holding the item, it brings the item in front of you and that can make it actually easier to drop the items into various areas. Our seventh tip is one some of you may not have encountered, but it has meant the loss of tens of thousands of coins worth of loot and tools, so I highly recommend this tip. From time to time, we find that items will fall through the ground, as you can see here, and often it can be an issue trying to get them back out. To avoid this, make sure items are stored correctly rather than scattered about your factory. For example, place excess ore in crucibles and buy tool racks to store your tools. The extra hundred in coins is far less than the price of an extra magnet staff and I have bought about 10 of them. It will also save you a lot of frames as you'll have less items scattered in that game instance. Now when placing pipes, try to lift the pipe up a level as you can sometimes lose the pipes permanently when you place them under the factory in a non-diggable area. Now if you do place pipes into the non-diggable area, just make sure that they're the larger pipes so that they show up easier, whether that's a pressurized tank, although don't use it because you won't be able to shut the, the door for it, or the pressure gorge, anything that's a slightly bigger skin on the pipe. Ninth, thanks to Martin on Twitter, if you place a conveyor 
After you're split it, the items will feed down the center of the conveyor rather than flinging out. This makes it much easier to control where the items fall. Tip number 10, whenever you drive a truck, make sure you have a bucket ideally filled with water everywhere you go, or at least make sure you fill them, the vehicle up if it's looking low beforehand. Trust me, you do not want to be stranded halfway between a town with the choice of unstucking yourself and refilling the truck only to do the journey again or running to the town to get to the nearest water source to fetch water for your truck. It's even more difficult if you don't actually have a bucket available at your base to fill up your truck, which meant I had to run to the town. So just bear that in mind, keep a bucket on you at all times. Next we have pay dirt. So the deeper you go, the better ore and payout you get. So dig deep rather than spread it out. Uh, that way you can use the top level um, for a nice um, base, a nice house, a nice mine factory but you can dig downwards and get the best pay dirt possible. Moving on to our 12th tip, if you're setting up your first automated mine above ground, it does actually seem to be more cost effective and profitable to build ram drill systems rather than goliath drills. However, underground, goliath drills are going to bring out a much better payload. Next, we're touching on efficiency once again. Now, water extractors run at 50% efficiency, so immediately your factory will be running under efficient. To improve this, you need to use a power shard on a pressurized tank, which will improve the efficiency by 25% for each pressurized tank, providing it's powered, that is. The higher the efficiency, the better the yield you'll receive, so it's always best to maximize this where possible. Now our 14th tip is that tools are inexplicably useful. You may not feel they're worth the extra expense, but trust me, a construction hammer or the magnet staff are must-haves. You could do with one of everything on hand at all times, that way you won't have to keep going back and forth to the town to pick up extras, so just buy them, buy the racks and keep them stored on site. Now our last tip is to never ever tip out items into other vestibules, uh, such as from a pan to a crucible, as the items will just go everywhere and you'll end up with everything you had on the floor and wanting to use a magnet to pick everything up. Uh, even more importantly, do not tip the items out onto your truck. This was a big mistake by me, and it means that you are unable to pick the items up using a magnet. So I had a lot of rubies to pick up after that. So there you are guys, 15 tips which are extremely useful to know in Hydroneer. Obviously the list is not exhaustive, so if you do have any tips yourself, please do put them in the chat section below. Um, maybe we'll uh, create a list and cover them in a later video. But if you did find this video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. It really is appreciated. It helps my channel out and it helps people who need these tips get hold of them easier. Also, if you do like my videos and haven't already, do make sure to subscribe. We will be covering Hydroneer for a while yet, and we also cover Satisfactory, as well as other factory-based games. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and as always, ciao for now.